Welcome back. Virtual Jeff here beaming again to you from the DieCats virtual space. I hope you enjoyed and found value in part one of today's introduction to virtual reality art making presentation. The first part explored the different aspects of what VR art apps offer and how those qualities can be expressive, transformative, and therapeutic. Broadcasting, digital puppeteering, and social VR apps, such as the one I'm in now, Spaces, allows for a fluidity of self, objects, and environment, and the ability to manipulate, augment, and express agency over these components within a virtual space. Exploring different versions of self-identity, image, representation, perspective, and perception is a powerful component of VR. When you bring in the possibility of shared space and interaction with one or more virtual avatars, so many possibilities for therapeutic engagement open up. Spaces serves as a central creative hub, virtual art studio, where a client can share 2D images of real or virtual photos, drawings, paintings, as well as 360 degree panoramas. And then you can see I'm in Van Gogh's bedroom for this part of the presentation, which is really cool. <laughs> you could share 3D models, sculptures, and illustrations, as we saw in part one, which are virtual artworks that can be experienced, explored, and walked around in together with an art therapist while feeling connected and embodied. So in this final part of the presentation, we will explore the inherent qualities of VR art apps and art making that serve therapeutic engagement. To start, and in service of highlighting VR's most prominent properties, here is a diagram of what I call the creative continuum, which is shows how initial forms, symbols, and concepts that are produced via an art directive or assessment, such as Kramer's, continue to evolve over time. So with 2D, the initial form is given an idea. With 3D, that idea starts to occupy space. With animation, an idea has movement in space. And then with VR, you add interactivity, presence, and immersion, and the idea becomes alive. So the purpose of the continuum is to understand the possibilities of how an artistic idea concept, symbol, projection can evolve? And what are the strengths and weaknesses of working with any given medium are? Here you could see that this process is nonlinear, hence the reason why I included the cycle symbols. Here are some ideas that I wanna share with you as to how you can work back and forth through the continuum therapeutically. So the first one I wanted to kind of discuss with you guys is importing a 2D image or photo into VR for reference or to add into a VR spatial scene. So this is an idea of kind of mixed reality where you're taking like a real world sketch or art object and bringing it into the VR imaginal space. So just as an example here, this artist took a 2D image plane, which is just basically a front and a side profile of a character and then started to build it out actually in spatially. So it's almost like a spatial drawing, a 3D drawing, which is really interesting in VR. Here's another example. This artist is in Tilt Brush and what he did was create a whole virtual painting, painted environment around him and then brought this painting, which was scanned or photographed from the real world into his virtual world. And here he's painting these light strokes out of it, which are real time brush strokes in, in tilt brush right onto this, this uh, traditional image. So really interesting possibilities that you could do here. Now, another example is you can record an animated VR spatial scene, right? With brush strokes of the painting. And we looked at it in part one where all the brush strokes emerge around you in real time and then play it back on a 2D flat screen with your client and watch what they created in the, the VR world. And some of this has to do with perspective taking, which is a really powerful component of VR. So the first person, the third person, and let me show you some examples. So here in Tilt Brush, 
you have two views. One is the traditional view, the first person view that you get where you're in, inhabiting this avatar that has a paintbrush and a palette. But another thing you could do is you can actually add cameras in Tilt Brush and this camera is now taking uh, footage of that first person from a third person camera. So this might be very useful for a therapist to see more of the gestural and embodied um, art making that the actual uh, client is doing. And so this is just taking another perspective there. So actually I wanna talk about a few other examples of this perspective taking. One was I was in Tilt Press myself doing a self portrait and I was trying to get the proportions quite right. And then you know what I, what dawned on me is like, let me just step right into these brush strokes right in the VR space. And it was an incredible experience where I took a first person perspective of my own painting, which was incredible. Then I stepped out and took the third person again and started painting. So that was an incredible example. Another example was I was in a social VR app with two other individuals. And actually this app had an option where you could take a third person view. So you press this button and it's really, it's almost like an out of body experience where it popped me out of my first person avatar and it was in the sky now, the camera looking down on me, talking to these other two individuals. And I felt really disengaged and almost as a spectator from this view and then versus the first person view. So that, that was a really powerful experience. There are really powerful examples of perspective taking in VR beyond specifically art apps. So I would encourage you to look up Chris Milk, M-I-L-K, and his TED Talks on YouTube. And he really discusses this idea of VR as an empathy machine. And this is a really prudent and, and very powerful concept for art therapists to look into. So I encourage you to do that. So another process that you could do in this nonlinear way is you could take a 3D printer and print out a spatial VR object that was created in VR. And then I almost think about this as like excavating from the subconscious to integrate back into everyday life. So your client can have this reminder on their desk or hold it in their hand of what they have created in the imaginal virtual space. So this is a really powerful uh, workflow. So as you can see, it's very flexible and powerful to work with artistic form and content in this nonlinear way. The element of interacting with things spatially while feeling present and immersed within, a, within the environment is the primary inherent factor of the VR medium that differentiates it from all the others. So let's talk about this a little bit here. So immersion, now what is immersion? Immersion is the ability of the virtual, re, of virtual reality co to convince you that of a feeling that you're some way, someplace else. Sensory information that gives the brain the impression that you're in another place so visuals, audio, and haptic feedback, et cetera. So, um, so contrast this with presence, and presence is how you're really engaged and feel yourself inside the virtual world. If interaction in the virtual world is easy and natural, the user feels that the experience they're having in that is truly happening in that moment. So right now, as an example, in spaces, I feel that presence and immersion are really high, right? I have a very natural avatar that's really responding to my physiology and my gestures. I have this 3D panorama around me and all kinds of a table and a, and a, and a screen. So I really feel present and immersed in this, in this environment. So what are the implications of VR immersion and presence in regards to therapeutic engagement? By donning a VR headset, the client enters another space without distraction. The elements of attention and concentration on the task at hand are enhanced. Feeling absorbed in an environment containing only tools, materials, and an infinite canvas is ideal for art creation. VR can also act as a spatial container, offering a safe haven and refuge for rehearsing new behaviors. Having the headset on creates an intimate space that can facilitate therapeutic trans transformations infinitely more personalized, nuanced, and malleable than being confined to the material space of the office or studio. I've discussed how spaces has tr transformed me in this regard, right? So a scene from a client's life or possible scenarios concerns can be created with VR tools, then inhabited, 
rearranged and transformed, externalizing internal parts, emotions and feelings, along with memories can also be explored in this way. And so let's look at an example of that. So here's an example of a VR painted memory, animated memory. This is artist Samantha Luck showing her grandmother a VR scene she painted with the art app that we looked at, Quill. Quill. So this is a Quill illustration, right? There's animation and even audio that could be added to enhance the scene. So this idea of memory is so powerful. And, you know, just to add a note on audio, for VR, the sounds are spatialized. So what that means is it's just like our natural physiology does. So for instance, objects that are nearer in space to you or on maybe a certain side of you are louder and you can hear it. And then it'll, de it'll decrease as you get further or walk away from them. So this is really powerful and it really enhances the immersion and presence of the VR experience. Now, I also wanted to show you this clip of a VR artistic experience called Where Thoughts Go, because I really think it brings together and, uh, and epitomizes everything that has been mentioned regarding the therapeutic power of VR. In this social world, human thoughts exist as these sleeping glowing orbs around you in space that you can touch and awaken to reveal voice recorded stories of other participants who are in the virtual space before you. These anonymous stories are revealing and inspiring. They encourage reflection and introspection. To, prog to progress through this world, you must leave your own stories and record them behind for others to, to uncover. Now I've been personally engaging with this app and it's incredibly healing intimate and moving. Another idea I want to kind of put out there is VR space can potentially act as a holding environment, facilitating, facilitating environment that exhibits characteristics almost like of a mothering womb. Synesthetic feedback can transmit a sense of repair and repatterning of early attachment wounds. Apps such as Tilpress allow for a dynamic movement of brush strokes, which can be synchronized to a nurturing sound, such as a heartbeat, through using what they call audio reactive brushes. Now, here's an example that's a little more active, right? And a little more, um, yeah, a little more active. So, but you could see there's an audio clip um, playing, and all these brush strokes and actually little effects that were painted are pulsating to the rhythm of the music. So. This is a really powerful feature of Tilt Brush and idea of what you can do with adding audio, kind of like what we're looking with and, and contemplating with memory. Here's another graphic that I put together, and this one shows what I call the kinesthetic continuum. So it shows how we're moving from these abstract inputs like the mouse and with messy tangle wires, flat screens, and bulky computers to using natural body gestures, free movement with wireless, and in 3D space, right? And they're all light and portable form factors. And this is really important in terms of feeling embodied and feeling like our physiology is really inherent in the experience. So virtual reality allows you to truly take your body and senses with you and engages your body's natural movement, gesture, and voice. So these elements of being present and immersed in another space, using your natural physiology to have agency over your appearance, objects, and environment, and the ability to augment them creatively in a real or imaginal manner, truly opens up innumerable, poss innumerable possibilities for creative, therapeutic directives, interventions while using the VR medium. So when both therapist and client have VR headsets and equipment. Shared virtual reality space allows our therapy practitioner, practitioners to enter consumers' artwork with them and bear witness to its creation. This can include watching the clients create artwork within a three, 360 volumetric space. And once the art's complete, therapist and client can experience Occupy and Journey together as we've seen with illustrations and countless examples. So, features in spaces and all the ways you can share and contemplate art. So this is an example. Here's an example of a virtual art show that a group of art therapists put together. And we could see how 
These shared VR spaces allow for many users to inhabit a space together. And so this opens up possibilities of group virtual art studio processes, as well as community art events, such as this example. And these guys are having fun. These are all, we're all created and sculpted within the VR app that we looked at, right? Medium. And it's actually all set up that, that art gallery in an app called Home, which is your default space that you begin with once you put a VR headset on. And you can decorate it with many real world objects, such as couches, tables and bookshelves, as well as mixing in imaginal props and art creations. So you can invite other users into your space to play games or watch media together. I spent a lot of time in my home customizing it and found it to be very therapeutic. I wanna point out one more of VR's inherent properties. The sense of scale is a huge component when working virtually. You can scale down your sculpture as in this example and hold it in your hand very naturally. So think about it. Clients may want to scale an image of a challenging person, situation or environment down to fit safely in the palm of their hand. Conversely, they may scale a VR representation of themselves up to, lar to a large, uh, large scale to feel more agency and power. And here's an example of a 3D print of like we were looking at before so this artist actually created this this image a self the self uh, portrait in tilt brush and and actually printed out on this really big scale so this is a really um a powerful example of using scale and how it can go back to what we were talking about the nonlinear process of the creative continuum now it's actually the imaginal uh, piece is now in the real world Okay, so I want to conclude this presentation today by answering the question, how can I obtain VR equipment today for my organization, agency, or practice and start to utilize it with clients? So I've been using the Oculus Rift, which is owned by Facebook for the past few years. And then, so let's look at the, what this is and, and what the advantages of the Rift are and what are the disadvantages. So the pros of this headset have been immersion and presence is very high, right? So it's very powerful. You need a computer to run it. The room scale, as I showed you guys, the sensors that you could put up is very great. The tracking, meaning like wherever I'm moving my virtual body, those sensors are picking up my, my real world body and, and mirroring one-to-one -one what's happening with my movement of my hands and my arms and my, and my head, et cetera. So it's very art centric. If you get the headset, you actually get Quill and you get Medium, the sculpting program with it when you, when you get it. So Oculus and Facebook are very, very good at, at promoting the arts and promoting artistic applications of VR. Now the, the, the idea of, the, of a precedent is very important. Now that the Oculus Rift has been around for a couple of years, you know what it offers now and people, you know, programmers, people have actually been able to tinker with it and use it and, and um, kind of get a feel for what those, what, it, what it can do, what it can't do. So the ecosystem now, Facebook is almost like Apple where it's very um, like almost like a walled garden and everything is very controlled, but that's actually really good because it's very streamlined versus like a PC base. And you guys might've heard of another headset called the Vive. And that's kind of more of like the wild west where with PCs, you know, there's, it's very powerful still, but you don't know what you get. It's not as controlled as, as the Apple ecosystem. So I, I look at Facebook and Oculus as more like Apple where it's a controlled ecosystem, which I think is an advantage, especially for, for us that, or for, for people that aren't as tech savvy, you know? So it's more affordable now that new headsets are coming to market. And this is really exciting. This is what, really what I want to talk to you in a moment about, but the cons. Okay. So you need a computer to run this you, and it's pricey, right? You need to buy the equipment plus a computer to plug it into, to run the actual equipment. So everything is tethered to the computer. The setup is there's wires coming out of the headset. And also the sensors are also plugged into the, to the computer. So a lot of wires, and that could be tricky when, when working with clients, right? Troubleshooting computers are all different. So you don't know, it's not a closed ecosystem in that sense. So everybody, you know, what I have running my 
headset may be different from the next person, etc. In terms of what kind of computer them now you can have a Mac to run the Oculus Rift. You really need a PC based computer to run it, either a laptop or a desktop. So accessibility, there are a lot of moving parts if you think about that. So, you know, what graphic cards, what the computer's using, what CPU, what GPU, what memory, et cetera, they're all gonna be different. So to combat this or to actually to look at this, we'll be looking at something different in a second. But, you know, Facebook and Oculus, I really like them also because they have a really good, um, a really good VR ecosystem. So purchasing a, purchasing a Rift in a computer, or a laptop to run it is similar. I tell people to committing to purchasing a MacBook Pro, right, for their for their practice to keep their notes and all that. And what I say is, you know, get the VR equipment in a computer and do your notes in VR. So that's that's what I say. So, um, but you know, it's what I'm going to show you guys in a second is a, a really exciting thing that's coming online. But Facebook also has several initiatives that you can look into to obtaining equipment, such as Oculus Start, Oculus Launchpad, and VR for Good. And all of these are really, really powerful programs to get um, a hold of this equipment. And if you need any help, please reach out. I'd be more than happy to help you look into this. So let's look at the next slide. Now, this is what's very exciting. Oculus Quest. Oculus Quest is coming out this year and in a few months it'll be released and what is it now this is very exciting because what it is is it's an all-in-one headset four hundred dollars no computer needed the form factor is put it on and you're in so no like booting up your computer and waiting for things waiting for the headset to kind of come online and apps this one just slips on and you're in vr which is amazing now this is an all-in-one headset so the computing power is all built into it itself and the tracking. So no need for sensors, no need for a computer. All the cameras and computing power is built into the headset, which is an amazing form factor. Now, things have been proved over the last couple of years. There's better lenses, better comfort. So all of the R&D that has been going on in the last couple of years since the Rift is all gonna be put into the Quest this year. It's gonna be social connected. I believe Facebook Spaces will be part of their ecosystem. It hasn't been announced, but I have a good feeling that it will be. Now, this is the big question. Can It can run six, step, six degrees of freedom programs, which that, that means you can move your body in space and it can track your arms and you can duck down, stand up, all of that, which is great. But is it powerful enough to run art apps? So that's the question. How powerful will this new headset be? How fast will it run the apps that are on Rift, such as Oculus Medium and Quill, all the ones that we looked at? Because those art programs and Tilt Brush take a lot of computing power. So what has to happen is, and I'll show you in a second what has to happen, but so what's the battery life of this since it's since it's untethered, not you know, we'll see how the battery life is. So optimi optimization is the name of the game here with this headset. So right here, what you have is a Quillustration that was ported over to Oculus Quest. And this is a video that was released. So we know that you could bring artwork that was made into Oculus Quest and actually have it run very well. This is a, you could duck down, you can crawl through the art, look up to the art. This is a whole experience that was created. Here's another slide of that. So this was painted by artist Goro Fujita and it's all was done in Quill and they ported it from the Rift over to the Quest. This is the problem though. On a PC, you have this really giant graphics card. In the Quest, it's gonna be mobile-based chips. So not only does the chip look so much smaller, right? If you look at it, the actual power of, of running the actual graphics is only one small component of that chip. So again, optimization is going to be the name of the game it's going to be wait and see if uh, if the oculus quest can run all these high-end art apps but i think it's going to happen and the quest really dawns a new era of vr and it's going to be very accessible to therapists so i just wanted to kind of point that out and i want to say thank you thank you for sticking around for this two-part series here 
in this wonderful symposium. I want to just let you know if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'm more than happy to answer and I'll be around. I'll be sticking around to answer questions here, but go to virtualrealityarttherapy.com. That's my site that has a lot of blog posts and entry point to find out more information. JeffLorius.com, which is going to be hosting a whole course on this information for art therapists. You can email me at any time at vrarttherapy at gmail.com. Sorry, not.com at gmail.com. And I just want to thank you again. Thanks so much for, um, for, for coming today and I'll, I'll see you around.